All right, what's up, everybody? Here we go again. Uh, it's a very, very fast turnaround here, and what we're doing here is uh, cue ball, which is one of the most the one of the most um, obscure-looking fellows uh, in the original Red Blue games. And I am talking to you live while doing this, and this took about 50 minutes. And uh, we'll see if I'll be able to explain a few things while I'm going for it. But first, I just wanted to say thank you so much for that wonderful reception for me actually talking through uh, the drawing process, because usually I don't have this sort of you know, this sort of positive um, reinforcement, and you know, guess what? It happens, and you liked it, and now we're doing it again, and here here I am looking for uh, more references for the cue ball, because this is very strange. Also, look at that. Exactly. Um, always wondered what that thing was, so I translated it as maybe just a belt and a crotch strap, some kind of jock strap thing. Who knows? That's That's the sort of thing I was going for, odd-shaped kind of thing. And while I'm doing this, I just wanted to say, uh, <laughs> hey, who that ninja, I told you, we meet again. I'm always looking at the same videos, and I always find you somewhere. But that's who you are, and that's who I am. So, hey, we meet again. And here I am working on this. Uh, I started with a cube kind of shape, um, just to see if it was possible to do it in the three dimensions. And of course, I didn't want to translate this one to one because I felt like doing it from the sprite was a little bit, well, a little bit boring, I would say. I hope you guys uh, feel the same way when it comes to trying to make something uh, different and new, uh, so it's not exactly, you know, the same thing. This actually gives more, has more of a challenge, but it also makes it more lifelike and it makes it feel like, uh, something worthwhile. So I did the initial sketch. You can see how, <laughs> how dirty and messy the sketches are, and I'm just trying to kind of lay out the foundations of how this guy will look like within the sketch that I prepared. So here I go. Uh, look at that really fast. Um, like I said, this took 55 minutes, and that's what the recording is, and we are reducing it to about 15, so hopefully I can chat about this while while this is going on. So, uh, Cue Ball is, uh, they changed his name, I see, to, um, I don't remember, uh, uh, to something else because of, of some kind of, um, skinhead kind of, uh, resemblances, and of course, like, I was just gonna mention, uh, the sprite there, he has some sort of strange things going across his shoulder, like shoulder pads or something, so I implemented that because it didn't look like muscles at all, so I just, uh, interpreted it that way. Um, so I'm just doing the sketch, it doesn't have to be any kind of strict brush to, to use, and so... As this is going, I'm also looking at some other references, and of course, kids, uh, please use references. Use references as often as you can, as much as you like. And um, there goes that jock strap. We'll see how that turns out in the end of this video. <laughs> so, the cue ball was a strange, or whatever they call him nowadays. Uh, he had a different design change for the newer games, and he looked more like a biker, more like a bully. But in this case, this was so strange that I really wanted to see how we could translate it into uh, what we have here. You know, from the, from the script, <laughs> from the sprite, directly from the sprite, so we can see how, how it was, how it's possible to get this guy looking the way he does. You know, I'm trying to get a... Uh, not a direct translation from the sprite, but uh, as far as design implementation and uh, things that you can uh, change, uh, construe uh, within your own interpretations, that's kind of what I was going for here. Um, as, as far as Ken Sugimori's style, um, well, I mean, look, uh, just trying to implement that blocky, blocky shape, you know, trying to get that kind of very stocky look uh, that Ken is, or, or he used to use more often than not. I think this um, hiker, who is very similar in build, um, is from the uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green remakes. I think that's where the picture's from. If not, it might be Diamond and Pearl. I'm not sure, uh, as I have not, I do not have extensive knowledge of games outside of Gen 1 and Gen 2, so... Excuse me, princess, but hey, you gotta do something. All right, so 
I'm still kind of adjusting the sketch here. And uh, as you can see, I took this to heart where it comes to flipping the canvas a lot. And I need to keep it in my uh, habitual um, um, habit <laughs> uh, to get this guy looking the way he should be looking. So here's cue ball. Uh, the portrait from the stadium is always a great reference because there's a lot of things that uh, could be missed from the sprite and this is very closely related to the sprite and has more details which is how I figured out the gambler actually has a beard you know from that one gambler picture that I did um, so uh, Ken Sugimori's eyes uh, back in the past uh, they used to be very geometric and very uh, elongated uh, or just you see how they're just like squares that are a little bit tilted and uh, his eyes used to be those kinds of uh, tall eyes those tall um, uh, lenses what do you call those i don't remember not iris not sclera pupil there we go and well, uh, what can I, well, what, what else can be said while well, uh, I'm just doing the line art, which again, I'm using the Yeti Rough Brush, which is from um, Clip Studio Paint. And um, hey, I mean, it's going, something's going on. Something's happening with this guy. Uh, I don't like the mouth now that I'm looking at it after I've drawn it, um, but hey, what can you do when you're kind of doing this quite fast? Uh, as you can see, the, the line art, the, the texture really works its way quite well for uh, an imitation of Kensugi Mori's uh, strokes, especially his digital ones. And I would love to know how or what he uses for his digital work, and I'm sure it's Photoshop, which I use uh, very extensively myself. But um, in any case, uh, well, well, there you go. And of course, I drew the strange jock strap uh, that uh, I would love to hear a resolved mystery towards this, but if there isn't any, that's fine too. And uh, that hand is disgusting and bad. You guys should not really look. Um, as I keep going through this painting, or drawing, you're going to see that I'm going to keep messing around with that hand quite a bit throughout the next half of this video. Um, I added these two lines on the chest, which might be pockets, so um, it gives me a little bit of... Um, creative liberty because there is no such thing in the sprite uh, you know there's a lack of detail towards it but you know I love the sprite I love how it looks like uh, I was going to put a Pokemon in there but I was like ah forget it don't need one it's all good it's fine and I used a different layer to um, as you can see with that with the item that he's holding the whip uh, so I can um, get a clear shape for the for the handle and then you know you erase it because of course the hand is over the handle um i'm i'm i still am messing around with that hand over there <laughs> look at it go Woohoo! look at it go so now i'm filling in the colors and i feel like filling in the colors first just a blank fill um and of course taking a little bit of color sampling from uh the stadium image and i always um imagined his pants to be brown and his shirt to be purple and I guess that might be a huge huge bias because of the sprite itself that uh, they use this orange and purple look which is what's going on right now so I filled it and now I'm using um, the pure watercolor brush that's what it's called pure watercolor if you guys have clip studio paint get pure watercolor <laughs> get pure watercolor it's pretty good very very watercolor like and uh, basically instead of using real watercolors which I have no idea how to use you just have to wing it and figure out what looks best to maintain a watercolor effect so here I am looking again at references of Ken Sugimori's uh, watercolor work which is very scarce as you can see on the reference sheet now this is pretty cool I don't know if someone actually expanded that background for Arcanine for the card game or if uh, they found like a raw wonderful image of uh, the composite of this thing but nevertheless it looks like it's a pretty good uh, reference for this image especially with the uh, the shadows the way he implements these uh, direct shadows like especially on Arcanine oh that's such a nostalgic picture um, that's what I tried to to get to but first I'm doing the highlights so I think uh, for me the highlights work the best at the beginning try to get those um, white 
highlights. So it looks like uh, there was some watercolor, very soft watercolor uh, being put all over uh, the body before I start putting shadows. And I believe uh, there's drowsy. That seems like a very good um, reference because of how monocolorful it is. Uh, that's not a word, but uh, there you go. Kabuto, Kabutops. <laughs> Got myself there. Um, he also really nice reference because of uh, the way the shapes are rendered with shadow. So that's what I'm kind of uh, looking at. Um, honestly, when looking back at this uh, picture after a couple of hours, um, not too happy with it. But then again, that's me. <laughs> always be unhappy. I will always be unhappy with um, what I've done, but hey, if you like it, I'm very happy, and uh, you know, you can't help but try to share the things that you've done to people on the internet. So, hey, everybody on the internet, I'm talking very quietly. Um, yeah, the shoulder pads and the wrist gauntlet things I thought were gray, I think that helps, and um, you know, the way Kensuke Mori's uh, watercolors kind of color themselves as far as different fabrics and metals go, especially the metals. Um, they're very, they always have some kind of color to it. Maybe the gray, I overdid it there because usually he would use some kind of blue or teal or something like that to give it that look. Uh, but in my case, I kind of messed up with the shoulder pads. Anyway, um, I think I'm doing the pants now and then doing the, the boots and of course, uh, Feet and boots are always an afterthought when it comes to me, which is unfortunate, but uh, hopefully it will be okay. See, now it's coming along. See, there's the cue ball. He's coming along. He's he's looking angry and uh, bully-like, and uh, hopefully it looks like someone you will be able to see or you saw or you imagined you saw in uh, the Pokemon world in uh, red and blue. Uh, the original games. So I tried to put a little bit more detail, and now that I, if you look at the layers, I'm on a top layer, or actually I'm still on the flesh layer. I always start with the flesh uh, and skin skin tones first, but at some point I will make a new layer and I will start putting details all over the new layer, no matter what part of the body it is, and I think that just saves a lot of time, uh, even though it's going to be hard to modify later on, but hey, you know, usually I don't go back to my drawings, I just finish it, and I'm like, okay, that's done, and I never really <laughs> open it again. Uh, so that um, middle part in that uh, strange contraption, uh, I imagine it was a belt uh, buckle, and uh, the only thing that it's attached to is uh, the crotch strap, and, the, and it's attached to the belt. Uh, I have no idea what that is. I wish I knew the mystery, the mystery of that that crotch strap thing. But yeah, anyway, going into now, I'm just looking at the nose. It's not good, and then those eyes. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? But hey, it always happens. Uh, maybe it's a good thing to look back at them because I usually don't. I just you know throw them out, and I'm like, hey, it's done. All right, let's let's move on to something else. But now I'm just looking at this and observing how I did. And I think that uh, it could use a little bit more work. Now I'm going to details. I usually don't do this because it feels like, you know, usually web-based pictures and stuff, they don't hold under the such scrutiny. But in this case, I made an exception just for you. Just for you guys. So you can see uh, the little details that you can fix, basically. And uh, I would recommend you guys do that because, you know, putting in 100% to pictures is always great. I never do that, which is sad. Maybe I should be doing that more often, but uh, now um, I'm doing an overlay layer uh, just to make it feel like there is a little bit more, a little bit more shadow and a little bit more con condensation, uh, condensing of the paint. So it kind of looks like, like especially on the shadow under his head there, I just added a little bit of um, darkness, so it feels like there's some kind of bleed. And then I changed the eyes because. Kensuke Mori sometimes does those kinds of eyes, and I felt like it worked for this cue ball character. And when you flip it, you feel like you're a disaster, but it doesn't matter because we have to keep going here. And I think uh, now it's just about done. Uh, just added a little belt there so you can it'll be more visible to see how that works. And there you go. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I am very happy you 
watched me draw this and thanks for the wonderful comments from the last video and I'm very very thankful for that so there's cue ball uh, I didn't I didn't render the whip don't matter and um, Hopefully this gave you some insight on how I do this thing. Hey, all right. Well, catch you later.